So, hello to my uh, friend hello. from uh, from France, Mr. Jules. Hello, everyone. Hello. How are so you all doing? We are doing great, thank you. Okay. So, um, so today we want to continue our little uh, series of videos about, um, basically about you. So I will yeah. kind of summarize a little bit, just very quickly. So the story with us. So, um, so Jules right here is, um, is my student about a, a year now, right? Yeah, yeah, about one year, one month and seven days. <laughs> oh, that's very accurate. Okay, so about, yeah. um, about a year. And so uh, when we started working together, um, so you've been um, uh, rated like about 1000 maybe about slightly more zero than, about yeah. zero on the on the internet ratings yeah and so practically a comp complete beginner right maybe knowing the rules of chess but probably yeah. nothing more right yeah Just and even maybe not all the rules maybe even not the rules so um so if you want uh, if the viewers want some uh, proof of that so uh, you can watch the first video in the series where we showed some one game from the very beginning uh, of our time together, um, which was like a completely random moves of chess, right? Yeah, right. It was. Yeah, and um, yeah. today we reached kind of uh, part three. So um, we're going to discuss today um, some games where you played um, online, admittedly, and. Um, yeah. Your opponents, by the way, in those games were quite high rated, already 1900, 1800, about this range of ratings. Yeah, because um, not a long time ago I decided to play only against um, higher rated players. Right, so I think at, at this very moment, like uh, as we speak today right now, you're rated almost 1800 on, on uh, like rapid yeah. or classical. Uh, uh, I think it's... 1795 1795 okay so um, that's an that's an uh, advancement or uh, like uh, improvement of like somewhere somewhere around 1600 like 600 uh, rating points maybe even more maybe yeah. 700 it's pretty uh, pretty amazing I think for you you made an incredible um, kind of uh, uh, progress. And Thank I you. think, yeah, and we will see some example of that uh, right now. So today yeah. we're going to focus on some games where you exploited some uh, weaknesses in your opponent's position, mainly his king position, in order to create yeah. very nice attacks. So, indeed. Um, indeed. Now, um, this is a game where you were playing white. This is our first example. Uh, so mm -hmm. it's move number 11. Um, yeah. So this position came from a Queen's Gambit, right? So lately we've been trying to play more Queen's Gambit, a more classical opening, right? Yeah, right. Uh, we used to play some more London systems as white, but at some point we wanted to kind of uh, expand our horizons and learn some more classical openings, which will maybe teach us to play more um, kind of positional chess and ideas. So yeah. um, in, in this position, Black decided to play a very, let's call it a committal move, right? He decided to weaken his position. Yeah, as soon as I saw this move, I um, thought uh, he was a patter. A patter, oh, saying. that's a, uh, you, you learned a new word, right? Yeah. <laughs> patter, so G5, he played this, he wanted to unpin himself basically, but this comes yeah. with a very big price, right? He's permanently weakening his position, and now whenever he will castle his king, uh, will be exposed. It will be exposed and it will not be as um, as safe as it once was. Yeah. So bishop g3 was played. We are uh, we don't mind exchanging those bishops. Um so he played bishop b7, fine, developing move. And now you wanted as I understand it, uh, you wanted to think about how to attack your opponent, so you needed to came up with a plan to open up the position. Yes. So, because his uh, king is, a is in the center, so yeah, I really wanted to open up this file and to attack him. Yeah, so your idea was to play here rook e1 and try to push the e pawn forward, opening up uh, the e file, uh, which was an interesting idea. I wanted to mention another idea that came to my mind. So 
once again to exploit this pawn on g5 it also makes sense to me to play a move like knight e5 moving this knight away yeah actually i thought i did this uh but uh yeah with the so idea do this yeah and f4 exactly to open yeah. up the f file it also makes a lot of sense because the pawn on g5 at some point will be exchanged for your f pawn and no matter I what hit I sorry yeah sorry no? go ahead go no, it's okay. So, um, so f4 will come. That's also a very good idea, I think, and and you will have a very strong attack. But after rook e1, it's also turned out quite okay for you. So uh, he played rook c8, very sensible move, putting the rook on the open file, and you went yeah. for your plan to push e4. Now, uh, if you if you remember, we will let our VS know that this was actually a mistake. Yes, uh, unfortunately. But unfortunately, specifically here it was a mistake. We kind of allowed him to um, to make a small tactic, which the opponent actually didn't mention. The viewers, if they want, uh, can st try to stop the video and figure how exactly Black is winning material here. Uh, Jules, do you want to show us? Yes, okay, so actually the rook takes the knight. Yes. And then pawn takes, for example. For example, yeah. And then pawn takes e4, and there's a fork between the bishop and the knight, and I can't right. do anything to stop it, because the bishop is protecting the pawn and the knight, so I can't take the pawn, and um, yeah. Very true. He wins a piece. He wins, he will have at the end I mean, two pieces for the rook. Or, yeah. But uh, he has an advantage. Yeah. it's Okay, also we know that white wants to attack the opponent's king, so definitely exchanging many pieces is in his favor. But he yeah. missed this chance, fortunately for us, so he exchanged on e4. And basically many exchanges uh, occurred in the, in, the few, in the next few moves. A lot of, and a lot of exchanges, which actually kind of reduced the potential of our attack, right? Less pieces, yeah. less attacking potential. But you showed later on that even with very few remaining pieces, you still managed to create some sort of attack. So you played knight f6 to attack your rook. And you played a nice move here, I believe. You, you went to e5 and not, not back, because it's in some positions maybe you wanted to uh, make some pressure against this pawn, right? Yeah, or maybe I saw the alpha zero games <laughs> where he yeah. put his rook uh, very near uh, the opponent. I mean, he blocked his pieces. I want to add, by the way, another positional point to the move rook e5 is that you deny this square, oops, not this one, this square for his queen. So, for example, yeah. in the future, he cannot put his queen in, in, on the center so easily. But I think, yeah, at the time I was thinking about Mainly the spawn. Mainly about the attack, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, um, he castled. And I think when he castled, you felt maybe something is wrong, right? Yeah, yeah, I was um, really considering sacrificing, maybe not right now, but uh, his pawn here, the king just in front of it, you know, I thought it was not very Exactly, safe. these kind of sacrifices are kind of in the air at the moment. They might yeah. not work immediately, but we need to maybe right, wait for the right moment. So I kind of like what you did in the next move. You, you realized the missing piece in this puzzle kind of is the queen. Yeah. You need to get your queen involved in the attack, so you took on c8, and now, do you remember the move you played right here? Yeah, queen uh, d2, I think. Yeah, queen d2. Now you add even more pressure on the pawn on g5. And surprisingly, the opponent was, I think, probably... Didn't. Sorry? The opponent didn't see it, because I'm threatening to take, and then... The knight falls too. I think what happened is the opponent maybe saw this, but just didn't see how to defend, which is strange because oh. he has a couple of options to defend the pawn on g5, but I think he missed probably all of them. For example, uh, knight h7 is just to uh, protect the pawn a little bit more, right? Or knight d7. Or knight d7. Yeah, also possible in order to drive this rook away. Also a good move. But m maybe he just didn't see any of those and played rook d8. And now, yeah. now you kind of understood that uh, it's time for tactics, and uh, I took. you took on g5. Yeah, it's not even a big sacrifice because 
after queen takes g5 check on the next move you also collect the knight on f6 and not only you have a strong attack uh, you also have the material advantage here yeah so it was uh, crushing <laughs> yeah and by the way the checkmate i'm kind of fast forward to the last move the checkmate was very nice in this position right queen h8 yeah <laughs> and yeah nice win once again the opponent 1942 player right yeah right <laughs> great let's see the next game so this was slightly uh, more um, more complicated Complex. more complicated the opponent is also even higher rated about 2000 rating already yeah by the way the, the, the name of the opponent me. is master complexity so uh, yeah that's <laughs> But that's a bit surprising the move he did because uh, he just advanced his pawns and uh, it was even easier this time because I just played f3 to open up the position yeah. and really attack his king and... Uh, I agree, yeah. the opponent, by the way, this in this the, the first position white has a pawn down, that's the pawn you sacrificed in the opening somewhere, uh, that's actually a theoretical, oh, yeah. the theoretical line which is called uh, uh, the Moscow the variation, I think. The anti-Moscow. Anti-Moscow. Yeah. Okay, so you t you took your pawn, but allow you to expand in the center. By the way, you played e3 here. Oh yeah. Uh, Should have okay. played, of course, e4. Yeah, e4. Four, e4 because much I'm more aggressive. E yeah. yeah. To add some that. options, maybe to play e5, right? Yeah. So, but uh, never mind. We reached. Uh, your opponent made a lot of effort to keep his extra pawn, and in this position. Uh, we see that black is, first of all, not castled, and uh, you also mentioned the fact that he pushed his pawns on the king side kind of a bit uh, prematurely, right? Yeah, yeah. And at this point you understood that's a good time to start thinking about the attack b before black manages to castle and, and to consolidate his position. Also, we can see that black is a bit underdeveloped on the queen side, right? Yeah, yeah. So the timing, he, the timing, really, right, is good to attack. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He really? Sorry, I interrupted you? Yeah, he really wasted time protecting his pawn, actually. He wasted time protecting his pawns, so, yeah, now we need to exploit it, right? Yeah. So, yeah, you want to show uh, the next move? Yeah, so, f3. Cool. f3. Now, a similar scenario like in the other game. You remember in the other game we discussed an idea to play knight e5 and then f4? Yeah. With the idea to open up the f file? Yeah, I remember. So the similar idea, we want to open up the f-file, so we are making the rook on f1 active without even moving it, right? Right. And the opponent, very surprisingly, completely collapsed at this point. He, he lost in four moves from this yeah. position. And I think it's coming to tell us another interesting fact about chess. When people get under attack, uh, they, they are much more likely to make mistakes, to get nervous, to um, to kind of commit very serious uh, errors, right? Yeah, well, to attack is easier than to defend. Actually. That's true. It's also more fun, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's yeah, yeah. A feeling. It it's a better feeling. Yeah. And I was very much surprised by 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 the let's say how quick white collapsed here. You know, the two thousand player black. black. Uh, sorry, the black is a two thousand player. You might expect some resistance right yeah but he just played the move bishop d6 which didn't have which was very very strange it didn't have any impact on the position the knight on e5 is protected enough times so we are not bothered about him taking it right yeah so he just played um he just played pawn takes pawn just makes tons of sense uh, to open up the file he took it now, I think you have many ways to win from this position, but I think you chose maybe the easiest, the clearest one. You want to show it? Yeah, so I just uh, I just took the knight. You took the knight. Take away the only active piece of the opponent, right? Reduce activity of the opponent, something uh, we discuss uh, quite a lot. Yeah, then he didn't even take. Yeah. He played rook g8. He thought he would uh, like kind of skewer me maybe yeah I think but uh then I took the pawn and he was just lost 
it was just lost. Yeah, yeah, in this position, white is already a piece up. You're going to win even more material. And I think that the fact that he resigned here is completely justified. Yeah, yeah. This king is very... Yeah. is in great danger. And yeah. Yeah. Basically, you won in 17 moves a 2,000 player, not something uh, you might uh, you might <laughs> expected to do one year ago. Yeah, <laughs> no. I guess, right? <laughs> cool. Uh, and the last game is perhaps the most kind of uh, complicated example, is a game Actually, against a much lower rated opponent, only like 1674. Oh, yeah. But at the same time, I would say in this game, your opponent put much more resistance to your attack than the previous ones, which is kind of funny. Yeah. yeah. So uh, in this position, the opponent actually made a tactical mistake. This move number 16, he played the move queen f6, f probably forgetting about uh, this uh, yeah, well, battery, right? Maybe. Or maybe he thought he would uh, counter attack. Also possible. So, but you made a good trade here. I think you took the pawn h7 with check. Now he is threatening to play g6 and to cage our bishop, right? Yeah. So we are forced to retreat, and then he took back the pawn by taking on e5 and taking with the queen. But let's say, how do you evaluate this kind of transformation? You took on h7. He took the pawn on d4. You also got yeah. the two bishops. Well, actually, um, I uh, we I just took a pawn in front of his king, so his king is really in danger. Plus, my bishops are just aiming at the king, and uh, it will be easy to expand and uh, attack his king. So True. I think I'm uh, yes better here. I will also add one more fact that I think it's relevant here. One of the yeah. reasons why White's attack on the king side is very probable to succeed is the fact that his knight, look at his knight on b6, is very far away uh, from action, right? He's very far yeah. away from doing and he, anything. And his rooks too, actually. Yeah, and his rooks, uh, his rooks might be able to defend the king, but not the knight. The knight is very far away. I yeah, think yeah. also, uh, until the end of the game, he was very much, n didn't do anything uh, positive to your position, to his position, sorry. Yeah. So you played bishop yeah. c3. Once again, the bishops are ready to attack. Now you made this little prophylactic yeah. move. I think <laughs> this move. No, it uh, was a it was a bad move. Actually. Yeah, probably not the best move. But let's 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 see. I just want to reach the very <laughs> critical point in this game. Because yeah. the computer. Oh yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, the computer. What? Yeah, the computer said that after this move, I must go back here. It's funny. It's very funny, but I understand your. Uh, idea. The opponent, by the way, played a good move, trying to counter-attack in the center, right? Yeah. And now you started to expand in the center, because you have those majority of four pawns versus, we can say, maybe three pawns of his, right? Yeah. You have the majority, we want to expand, we want we also want to open up the position, so e4, very sensible. You played d4, you played bishop d2, tempo against the queen. And yeah. I think you made a very critical mistake here that you played the move queen e5 because this allowed you to play the move f4 with a tempo. And I think starting from this pos from this point kind of onwards, your attack is very kind of easy going, very clear flow yeah. of moves, right? Yeah, yeah, I wanted to put my rooks here at some point. Maybe on, uh, yeah, on the h file, yes, definitely. The funny thing that you could also take the pawn on c5 uh, yeah, this but point. I really was very concentrated on this side, actually, of the board. On the attack, you were looking at the black king, you wanted to attack him, <laughs> you didn't even realize yeah. such an easy move like queen takes e5. Yeah. Which is maybe forgivable, but um, we know that it's important to look at the whole board, always. Yeah. 64 squares. Yeah, yeah, it's very important. But the attack actually worked out quite well, and we know from previous games that when the opponent is under attack, he is much more likely to make mistakes, which is exactly what happened, right? Right. So he played g6. What do you think about this move? Um, actually, uh, he maybe thought it was defending him, but actually it was helping me to open up the position even more, to sacrifice maybe. Um, I mean, it was really helpful. Yeah, um, he, he gave you this very clear target to attack. And also weaken his dark squares around the king. 
Yeah, so, I really uh, can do bishop. this. Uh, it's crazy. Yeah. yeah, the move g6 is a very bad move from defensive point of view. We can also discuss a very important principle in defense. Try not to move the pawns in front of your king. Right? Yeah. This is something we, we try to do because that's something that many times only creates further weaknesses for the opponent to attack. Yeah. So he played bishop d5. And now you play this little prophylactic move in the attack. The move you went back to g1. Yeah, because uh, I couldn't take the pawn right yeah, now. Yeah, because suddenly the rook will become active, right? Yeah. So nice move. I really like this little prophylactic move in the defense, even even when you attack. And starting yeah. from this point, it became very clear that White is going to have a strong attack. He played King g7, gave you this little tempo of playing f6 with a check. And at this yeah. point, you you mentioned some idea before how to exactly proceed with your attack. Can you remind us? Yeah, to bring my rook in. To bring your rook on uh, the that's rook what I did on the to this file, right? The h file. Yeah. So you couldn't do it from e4 because the bishop was protecting it. So you went rook f1. Yes, which right. was uh, not uh, such a great move, but yeah. yeah. So once again. Uh, this point is hanging. We are not now discussing too much. Uh, of course, yeah, yeah. We, we we are still not playing perfectly, right? Uh, Nobody is playing yeah, perfectly. But the ideas you played in this game, I think, were very good. Uh, oh, once again, your opponent was under tremendous pressure. He played rook h8. Uh, he wanted to maybe yeah. safeguard his king, but you managed to get his king even uh, in the center of the board. You played. Rookie one, defending your pawn and bringing yeah. perhaps your last piece into the attack, right? Right. And after king g8, oh, please that... remind us now the right time, now that all of our pieces in the attack, it's time for action, right? Yeah, so I took the pawn. Took the pawn, bishop takes g6, time for fireworks, right? Yeah. So after pawn takes g6, you want to show the rest of it? Yeah, so... I took the pawn and he moved his king and just the position is lost. I um, I brought my other bishop, I mean my bishop actually. Yeah, your and, only uh, bishop, yeah. Yeah, so it's lost. It's lost, yeah, the only way is not to get checkmated to sacrifice the rook and uh, just to illustrate, uh, th this kind of position is quite beautiful. So. Uh, those two pawns on e6 and f6 supported by your rooks on f1 on e1 really make your attack irresistible practically. Yeah, it's actually checkmate in, let me see, 13. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't see this, but uh, obviously you are winning here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so um, uh, once again, I wanted uh, to thank you, Jules, for uh, being a, a guest here in. Uh, in this video, uh, I work. really uh, enjoyed once again show, taking a look at those games which we already saw in the past. But it's kind of refreshing to see your improvement over time. Yeah. And our next goal probably is 1900. Yeah. So uh, we will let uh, we will let the viewers know when this happens. I'll make a yeah. celebration. <laughs> okay. Cool. Yeah, cool. So, um, yeah. thank you very much, Jules. For, thank you very thank much, you. the viewers. And uh, I'll you. see you in the. We will see you in the next part of this series, probably about some end games uh, you've played, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Sounds cool. Yeah. Okay. So, see you guys next see time. You. See you. Bye.